welcome back folks thanks for joining me here on my little channel usually daily rants about something well i'm going to stay more or less close at home today <coughs> um, as the other day we had a bit of good news well we'll see um, now a couple of weeks ago I said that they were going to scrap all the restrictions around COVID and the Emergency Health Act. And at that time, I said that they were going to lift them, not do away with them. They'd be holding on to them for possible future use. That's what I saw. Well, now they can't. <laughs> Because the other night, well, it was very, very quiet. And I even missed it. I didn't find out until yesterday. Um, the MPs voted to remove the Emergency Health Act from the government's powers. Which means if they want to invoke it again, they've got to go through all the rigmarole of getting it read and getting it passed. Um, that's the Emergency Health Act uh, 2020, I do believe it was. Um, now, I don't want to piss on anybody's party. Well, except maybe one that allegedly happened or didn't happen. I had a pissed all over that one. <laughs> um, but that is irrelevant what they've done there. Because if they get the proposed rewrite of the rights bill through in its current form, their powers there will supersede that immensely. They'll be able to put mandates in all over the place, tell you what to take, where to go, what to do, how to get there if they think it's for the greater good. And I don't just mean medical procedures here, I mean the whole of your lifestyle, your way of life. If they feel it's for the greater good, they will be able to control everything. So, I've already done it. Sign the petitions, write letters, emails to your MPs. This must not happen. It will take away all your fundamental rights as a human being in this country. Uh, oh, the last time I wore this, um, <laughs> somebody asked if there was anything on the back. And I do apologise, I totally forgot to reply to it. Well, here's what's on the back of it. <laughs> or that's what a lot of people would like to see on the back of it <laughs> I'll show you what's really on the back of it at the end <laughs> now the shit shower in the house of power have been using this Ukrainian Russian thing um as a distraction, as they always do when something like this blows up. Or they want to cover something up with another story. And they've released a paper, again, very, very low-key, unannounced, unpo you know, it's publicised, but it's not being advertised, shall we say, about just how number they got the numbers wrong right at the beginning of all the uh, Lurgy outbreak, I'll call it. And that they used the wrong numbers to model on. Well, you can't model on something that isn't happening, you absolute idiots, because it's all supposition then, isn't it? But after admitting that, they said that everything they did with the lockdowns and that, and social distancing, 
made less than 0.02% of the effective difference. So whether the lockdowns happened or not, there wouldn't have been really any different outcome to what we had. How many times did we tell them that? But with everything else going on, they haven't got to stand there in front of a camera and apologise, have they? <clears throat> and then we get from <laughs> that to, you know, the, the BBC, I mean, they're, they're at a certain level of sexual arousal, arousal over what's going on out in the East there. And again, they're quoting all sorts of numbers, refugees, people killed, people, whatever. But then now, on the end of every single one, add in, we cannot verify this. Well, of course you can't, you... Oh. <laughs> Not that you would, anyway. You know, that, that would... Um, wouldn't do the, the sex, sexual thing for you, would it? You know, getting all excited and jiggering around on your seats when you're talking about people or it. <coughs> but, yeah, I mean, I will say a bit out there, about out there. But, basically, we still don't know what's really going on. All we're seeing from this side is Biden, the mashed potato, and bumbling Boris poking at the fire. You know, are they deliberately trying to escalate things? Because that's what it looks like. But they're not realising that Putin's a dictator. He's not interested in what they're doing or what they've got to say. He's got his target. He don't give a crap. It's what dictators do. And the sooner these idiots realise that, no matter what crap they spout, they ain't going to make any difference. Uh, we'll leave that there, leave that there. <laughs> uh, with everything else going on, I mean, the NHS have been very quiet. You know, a few weeks ago, they were bleating about this, bleating about that. We haven't got this, we haven't got that, we haven't got the people, the hospitals are still filling up. Since this all started, we haven't heard a word, have we? Well, I haven't. I don't know whether anybody else has. But uh, I think we've got to start looking behind the mirrors. Now, today is a poignant day, and I would hope that everybody remembers the horrific murder of Sarah Everard by a serving Met officer. And also spare a few moments for a family. You know, they, they lost a loved one in horrific circumstances. So bear those in your thoughts today. And now at that time, the police promised to step up their protection on vulnerable women, solo women, women in general. And have we seen that escalation in that protection? I haven't. There's been several more since, and several that have been committed by serving officers. So the failings are still there. They're not learning. They haven't learned. They've done sod all about it. Well, I suppose they've got rid of caressing her dicks, but that's about it. And there's more being exposed. Pap does an excellent job of that over on police abusing powers. They're in the day gone past where he hasn't had at least one report of one of these perverts in the police force. But they're not being held to account. If they do end up in court, it's paltry sentences. If they don't, the worst they can expect is lose their job. Most of the time, it's a slap on the wrist, be a good boy in future, don't get caught, soldier on. And this is how you call 
This is what you do to up your level of protection of the public. Whatever little faith and trust that people had in the police is out the window. It, it's gone, as far as I'm concerned. But anyway, people, I'll leave it there for today. I've seen the timer again. We're approaching 10 minutes. Um, thank you for joining me. My respect to each and every one of you. And thank you for your support. It's much appreciated. Even the odd one that puts the light down now and again. Fine. You've got to come in to put on the put the thumbs down on. That's absolutely fine. Comment would be nice to go with it. Some a bit constructive, but hey ho. So until the next one, people. As always, stay safe, stay strong, stay free from tyranny. And I promised to show what was on the back of the jacket, didn't I? Very, I don't know whether you can see that, very nicely embroidered um, timber wolf. Later, guys. <laughs>